You have heard the expression that knowledge is power. In the book of Job, Job actually mentions quite a number of times the word knowledge. In Job chapter 21, verse 22, the Bible says, can anyone teach God knowledge? God is omniscient, meaning he is all knowing. In Job chapter 33, verse three, the Bible says, my lips utter pure knowledge. So if you can utter pure knowledge, you can also utter impure knowledge. In Job chapter 36, verse four, the Bible says, God is perfect in knowledge. What kind of knowledge are you attaining for? Is it uh, things of everyday life? Now, I believe we need to know things about life, but are you trying to strive to have spiritual knowledge? The Bible says, set your mind on things above and not on the things of the earth. And so I wanna encourage you to try and attain spiritual knowledge. And we find that in the word of God. I wanna share a story with you and that is, it comes from Daniel chapter five. The historical context of that chapter takes place in the year 539 BC. You have a king by the name of King Belshazzar, and uh, he's a Babylonian king, and he has a party, and there's about 1,000 people at this party, and he's using vessels, which were vessels that were taken out of the Temple of Jerusalem, a long time ago back in the past when uh, King Belshazzar's grandfather, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, went to Jerusalem, and that, that was the first Babylonian captivity. You read about that in Daniel chapter 1. So anyway, King Belshazzar, he's having a party, and then all of a sudden during this party, there was a hand that appeared. Uh, nobody, just a hand, and it wrote on the wall. Now, King Belshazzar didn't understand, uh, di didn't understand the interpretation of what the handwriting was on the wall. So he calls his wise man, and the wise man couldn't give him the interpretation. Eventually the queen, she comes before King Belshazzar, and it was not uh, his mother, it was not his uh, wife, I should rather say, but it was his mother who was the queen. And she said, look, King Belshazzar, don't you know that there is a man by the name of Daniel? Uh, he was known during the time of your grandfather, King Nebuchadnezzar, and he can give interpretation and understanding and the spirit of the holy God is in him and he also has knowledge. So Daniel, he comes before King Belshazzar and uh, Belshazzar says, look, are you Daniel, uh, the captive of Judah? And of course, Daniel said, yes. And Daniel begins to share, this is interesting, he begins to share the story of uh, King Nebuchadnezzar who converted. See, you read about this earlier on in Daniel chapter four, which would have taken place almost 25 years earlier than the historical context of Daniel chapter five. And uh, you read about the conversion experience. And so uh, Daniel is saying to King Belshazzar, do you remember this and how he humbled himself before God? And the Bible says in Daniel chapter five, verse 22, that King Belshazzar, he knew all of this. In fact, a quotation from the book, Prophets and Kings, pages 522 to 523 says this, he, talking about King Belshazzar, had known of his grandfather's banishment by the decree of God from the society of men, and he was familiar with Nebuchadnezzar's conversion and miraculous restoration. But Belshazzar allowed the love of pleasure and self-glorification to efface the lessons that he should never have forgotten. The truth is this, that King Belshazzar, he had a knowledge of what his grandfather went through, but he did not have the knowledge of the God that King Nebuchadnezzar was converted to. Because if he did, well, King Belshazzar, most probably he would have accepted the God of the Bible, the God of heaven. We don't know that if that's actually true or not, but still he did not have the knowledge of the God that King Nebuchadnezzar converted to. You know, knowledge is just not having knowledge, but real knowledge is putting that knowledge into practice. Uh, we're talking here about spiritual knowledge. Uh, Solomon, he has a lot to talk about knowledge. In Proverbs chapter one, verse seven, it says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 14, the Bible says this, wise people store up knowledge. You know, in the book of uh, Daniel, Daniel chapter 12, verse four, Daniel received some, uh, some orders, a command, that he was to seal up the book, seal up the book of Daniel until a certain time period, and that is the time period until the time of the end. 
And when one studies the Bible, the time of the end begins in 1798. And then the Bible says that knowledge will increase and run to and fro. And when we study history, we know that since 1798 to the very present, knowledge has increased. And when we're talking about knowledge increasing, we're not talking here about technology and iPhones and iPads. Yes, we see that technology, um, knowledge in technology has increased. But really, contextually there, we're talking about spiritual knowledge increasing. Um, people know more about the Bible today than they did know 200 years ago. You know, there's so much more that I can share. Let me share a, a statement from a book called Steps to Christ, chapter 10, which is entitled A Knowledge of God. Page 90 says this, There is nothing more calculated to strengthen the intellect than the study of the scriptures. No other book is so potent to elevate the thoughts, to give vigor to the faculties as the broad ennobling truths of the Bible. If God's word were studied as it should be, men would have a breath of mind, a nobility of character, and a stability of purpose rarely seen in these days. You know, let me leave with you uh, with one Bible text, and that is 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, which says this, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. And may God bless you.